I know what you're thinking. How can someone who's homeless have views like this? Well, the reality is once you are on the street, you've got to figure a place to keep warm. And here at Central Picture House, just overlooking Piccadilly Circus, the membership is just £60 a year, which means that I can stay indoors for a pound a week. That's the equivalent of my rent, one pound a week. And that's how you've got to think when you live on the streets. It's the only way to survive. Now, the reality is I'm 48 years old. This is the age that most people will die if they're in this situation. 48 years old. That's the life expectancy of someone who lives on the streets. Now, the reason I'm doing this campaign is that Ken Loach's I, Daniel Blake film has just come out. Well, it's come out two weeks. This is my 14th night living in a car. Now, I've been homeless before, so this isn't something that's new to me. I know how to adapt, I know how to engage, I know how to get the best out of life. I'm living on 30 pounds a day. That's 210 pounds a week, and the equivalent of a week's income for employment support allowance and personal independence payment. I suffer with an illness called chronic fatigue syndrome. This is why I'd be getting these benefits. And I live in a car. Not everybody who's homeless has that luxury, but I'm fortunate. I've got access to a vehicle, which means I can live in central London. In my head, psychologically, to do that, I need to just think that's my bed. That's where I sleep at night. For a lot of people, if they find themselves professional, suddenly in a situation where their income isn't coming in, that's not a possibility. They lose the mindset. So every fortnight, I'm gonna be recording one of these vlogs to explain to you exactly what it's like to live in a car, what it's like to survive on the streets, how we'll get through each day and every day, and hopefully, slowly, as you begin to understand just how hard this is to do, you'll start caring. And the more you start caring, the more I hope you'll start engaging. You'll start watching films like I, Daniel Blake, start reading the newspapers with an entirely different viewpoint. When you see those benefit-hating stories, you'll start asking your question, well, was that family really done anything wrong? When the Nigerian family last week were placed in a, a four-bedroom home, there were 10 of them living in a two-bedroom home, and there are now 10 of them living in a four-bedroom home. If you live in London, £500,000 will get you a shed. It is not a lot of money. Blasted across a headline, suddenly people who haven't done anything have been given a half a million pound house. Sounds terrible. But that wasn't the story. The story was, Someone training to be a nurse, who in his spare time is a carer, who has a cultural uh, identity to have a large family, has been moved from one piece of accommodation to another piece of accommodation to be, well, human. And that's really what I want you to think about all the time. How do we be human? Ken in I, Daniel Blake, looks at the DWP and says these people are evil. There's been a lot of backlash going, well, no, they're not, they're just working, they're just doing their job. Let me tell you right here, right now, no, they're not just doing their job. In fact, more often, they're breaking their own policy to achieve evil outcome. How do I know this? I've worked for them. Not in its current incarnation as the DWP, but as it was previously, the Department of Health and Social Security. And even then, and that's going back 20 odd years ago, in 1986, even then, there was an inherent need for the staff there to be nasty to the people who were coming into our offices. And they came from vulnerable backgrounds. They came from environments where their children couldn't be fed if they didn't get money. I quit. I couldn't take the attitude. I couldn't take the, the, the hatred of these people, and worse of all, I couldn't do anything internally to do something about it. But I've not only worked for the DWP, I've claimed from them too. And I can emphatically prove that Daniel Green's claims that I, Daniel Blake, presents a fictional DWP is completely nonsense. 
I've enjoyed everything highlighted in the film during my claims for ESA and incapacity benefit, including having my benefits unreasonably suspended for nearly a year. In fact, if it wasn't for the intervention of Private Eye magazine, I would have starved to death or committed suicide. This is my first opportunity to make myself public and to address the problem at its very root. And that's what I intend to do. I'm going to endure living in a car for a year. 365 nights on the streets here in Zone 1 in central London. For every night I do this, it is going to be a damage to my health. For every day I can't afford to eat properly, it's going to be damage to my health. But I would rather do that so I can talk to you about exactly what I'm going through than allow another day of someone to be berated because of circumstances they got into that was no fault of their own. And more importantly, because one day that could be you.